<laughs> this, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Welcome to hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you. And over 250 plus markets across the United States of America and, of course, nationwide on Sirius XM, ESPN Radio's channel, Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 888-729-3776. That's 888 888- Say ESPN, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance with insurance for cars, home, boat, motorcycles, RVs, and commercial vehicles at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and Progressive.com. Lots to get into in hour number two. Love Doc is going to make an appearance in approximately 14 to 15 minutes or so. Of course, Rashad Jennings, former running back for the New York Giants, is going to be live in Times Square in New York City handing out flowers. We're here to find out why. First order of business, however, for hour number two is to get into Des Bryant. He's making news because at some point in time, if they have not already, the Dallas Cowboys are going to approach Des Bryant and they're going to ask him to pay, take a pay cut. I think he's scheduled to get about $16 million this year. They ain't trying to pay him that. They're looking for him to take a pay cut. And so the question is, should Des Bryant take a pay cut or leave? Should the Dallas Cowboys offer him a pay cut? Or cut him. Now you're looking at Des Bryant on one hand, understand this. Dallas got a lot of problems. Jason Witten ain't what he used to be. The offensive line last year wasn't what it was years before. Your number two receivers in Terrence William and Cole Beasley weren't great. Ezekiel Elliott wasn't there for six games, so without him, Dak Prescott wasn't the same. So you look at all of that, and you gotta say to yourself, that you can't just blame Des Bryant. That's not right. And that would be true. Absolutely, positively true. But there's a flip side to all of that. That can't be ignored. And you know what that is, ladies and gentlemen? Is that Des Bryant ain't what he used to be. Doesn't gain separation from the receivers the way he used to. Isn't open even when he's not open the way that used to be the case. Combine that with the fact that he no longer has Tony Romo throwing him the football. That Dak Prescott, as much of a stud as he is, indeed might not be the thrower that Tony Romo, a healthy Tony Romo, was. And who knows what kind of effect that has had on Des Bryant's performance, who hasn't had a 1,000-plus yards a season since 2014, by the way. But here's the reality. Des Bryant because of those liabilities, those deficiencies, and the fact that it is clear that defenders don't respect them the way that they used to, it might require a pay cut. I don't think you just cut him if you're the Cowboys. I think you give him an opportunity to see if he's willing to restructure and renegotiate. If he's not willing to, then you might have to make a move. Because I don't think he should count that much against your cap if you're the Dallas Cowboys. He just should not. He just should not. He's not Antonio Brown. He's not Julio Jones. He's not Odell Beckham Jr. He's not these guys. Des Bryant is not a top five receiver in the NFL anymore. I'm not disrespecting them. I like him. Good brother. He's not what he used to be. And if it's me, I'm not giving him that much money. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. Plain and simple. 888-SAY-ESPN, it's 888-729-3776. Another story I want to get into, LeBron James. There are some people that are out there thinking that I've been a little bit too hard on LeBron James. I beg to differ. I think that today's NBA players, not specifically anyone, but in general, by and large, are so much softer than they used to be. You can compliment them 99 times. You criticize them once, the 99 times get forgotten. I think the age that we're living in with social media and beyond, the whole branding issue and how guys have been about the business of monetizing their brand, they're so overly sensitive overly sensitive to every little thing. They just can't take it. And I think in a passive-aggressive way, LeBron is one of those people. Ladies and gentlemen, LeBron James is the best player in the world. There's no way around this. Any team that should get, that could get him outside of the Golden State Warriors should take him. I wouldn't even trade Klay Thompson for LeBron James. 
Because if I'm the Golden State Warriors, I'm going to win in titles without you. By the way, I'm beating you en route to those titles. Why would I trade one of my cogs for LeBron James? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. That's how I feel. The flip side to that is anybody else would and should want LeBron James. Anybody. He's the best in the world. But that's as a player. As a leader, I contend he dropped the ball. No, he did not want Kyrie traded. Yes, he did tell Dan Gilbert and them, keep him. We'll come into camp. I'll make it work. We'll work it out. No, he was not listened to. All of that is true. But who's to say LeBron James really, really tried to work it out with Isaiah Thomas and Jamie Crowder there, with Derrick Rose in the lineup and all of that stuff? Who's to say he really, really tried? I'm not saying he sabotaged anything or whatever, but if they didn't listen to him when he told them to keep Kyrie, who's to say he didn't check out? And by the way, prior to his quote-unquote allegedly but not allegedly checking out, um, Kyrie Irving wanted to leave. This dude is going to be a superstar in the league for years to come. Was LeBron James not responsible in some capacity for affecting Kyrie in a way that would make him want to leave? And then let's get to the basketball portion of it. Does Le- does not LeBron James hold the ball a little bit too much? Does he not dribble for too many seconds at a time? Has he not relegated teammates to be a stand-around spot-up shooters? Again, he's the best in the world. And we understand that LeBron could do most things on the basketball court better than most human beings. But part of being a leader is submerging your abilities from time to time to uplift others around you because you know you can't win by yourself. That's what Phil Jackson convinced MJ to do. That's what Phil Jackson convinced Kobe to do. So how come LeBron James can't be guilty of negating to do such things? And why is pointing it out such a crime? It's not a crime. LeBron James is the best in the world. But we're talking basketball. This is why I got on him months ago. And I went off because, you know what, LeBron has a good game and he's, you know, he's, 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 he's euphoric. He has a bad game, people point it out. And then he starts talking about he cares about his kids and he cares about his foundation and he cares about uplifting the community and being a role model. That don't have anything to do with us talking basketball. Can we not talk basketball without somebody getting their feelings hurt? Why we can't do that? What's wrong with saying he's the best in the world, but this is what he's not doing? What's wrong with saying because he's the best in the world and he's this versatile and he brings this much skill to the table that you can afford to submerge some of your game in an effort to uplift? For example, if Kyrie wanted to be a real point guard and he really wanted to run an offense, why not let him? Just so you wouldn't lose him. He's Kyrie Irving. You can't make an exception for that? I'm wrong to say that? These are the kind of things I'm talking about. But to bring stuff like that up, oh my Lord, you're dissing him. You're disrespectful. See, that's why eventually... Y'all going to see me on these Cottonelle tissue commercials. You know, that's why y'all going to see me on these Cottonelle tissue commercials. I'm going to be a product pusher for Cottonelle tissue. Because if there's a product that NBA players need in this day and age, it is that. My God. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. 364 days out of the year. One day. One moment. I got a problem with this. Man, Stephen A ain't worth a damn, man. That's the world we're living in. That is the world we're living in. And then you wonder why all of these non-stories are stories. You know why they're stories? Because of how people react to them. 
That's why. Think on that before I get back to you. Love Doctors up next. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. By the way, living dangerously can be a thrill, but waiting until the last minute to purchase her a Valentine's Day gift? Now that's playing with fire, y'all. Guys, this is it. You've only got one day to make this happen, so do it right and win Valentine's Day with 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, 1-800-Flowers has amazing offers on beautiful Valentine's bouquet and arrangements starting at just $29.99. But you only have one day left. To order beautiful and vibrant Valentine bouquets starting at just $29.99, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter code SAS. Valentine's Day is coming, so order today and save at 1-800-Flowers.com. Code SAS. I'm going to repeat that again. It's code SAS. Remember that. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. Love Doctor's about to make an appearance in a minute. Don't touch that dial. Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage Um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I see a yellow-eyed serpent and a low APR. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. To the phones we go. Love doctors in the house. Love doctor never fails. Never fails. Martin Lawrence, you hear me? <laughs> Chris in L.A. You're live with the love doctor. What's going on, man? Hey, Stephen A. Uh, you know I usually call to talk about basketball. But I have a question for you. I'm a single. I'm a single guy. I'm a single father. I don't feel like I have time for women, but. There's an event coming up, and my mom was of the mindset that I should, a single event, and there's another mindset that I should go and maybe try to meet nice lady, and I'm of the mindset. No, you're talking too fast. When, you're, talk, you're talking too fast. You said your okay, mother sorry. Your mother said yes, you yes. should go. Yes. What kind of event so is this? It, it's, a, it's a single, singles-only event, and my mom was of the mindset I should go and try to meet I'm like, no, I'm focused on my career, getting where I'm trying to go, being a dad. And when the time presents itself, God will put me in the how, right place how, for the lady who's supposed to come. How, how old are you? I'm 30. You're 30, right? Yes, sir. You're a single father, right? Yes, sir. D- what kind of influence has your mother had in your life? Major. Your mother's a wonderful, God-fearing woman, isn't she? I, absolutely. That's where I get it. So, so if your mother's a wonderful, God-fearing woman, right? Yes. And she's had that kind of profound impact on your life, right? Yes. Correct. And you have, and you're a single dad. Yes. What makes you think that you wouldn't be blessed enough to find a wonderful woman that can be that wonderful influence in your child's life? Shouldn't that be I, incentive I, I, enough? Okay. No, all, all that, I mean, I'm, I agree with you, Stephen. But my thing is, why do I have to go out there and search for it? Why can't well, I you, let God put me in the right place well, you're bring not, a woman you, to me? You're really? not searching for it. You're going to a singles event. The fact of the matter is, there's no harm in it. You never know who you'll meet. The fact is, is that you're working hard. You're grinding to provide for your child. And that's what you're married to at this particular moment in time. Fair enough. But if you go someplace particularly to an event where everybody there is single and they know why they're there. You can go there and just chill. You don't have to go there stalking anybody and, you know, and, and, and being in anybody's face, but you can go there to see, you can go there to spectate. You can go there if for no other reason, just to get out and to get away from fatherly responsibilities for a moment and just enjoy yourself. You never know, because a lot of times and it's not just in situations like this. A matter of fact, most instances is not this kind of situation, but a lot more often than not, people actually use our heavenly father as a crutch. They say, well, God has a plan and God will make this happen. Well, God ain't going to make anything happen for you if you stand still and waiting. But that's but that's my thing, though, Stephen. I'm not in any rush, though. That's the difference. You see what I'm saying? My mom is, okay, you're 30. I want to. I want you to start having more children. I need to focus on your career. But 
I'm not in any wrestling scene. I feel like a well, woman not, more hinder me more than anything. That's well, this is the difference but, but where I'm going. But, but there's no. But what I'm saying to you is that that's a decision you can make whether you went there or not. So what's the harm in going? You act like going is harmful, and it's not. You yeah. have everything that you're saying right now. You can say the same thing once you go. You can say the same thing after you go and leave. Why are you acting like going is a hindrance to you when it's not? Uh, all right. Uh, all, all right, love, Doc. I, I just feel like there's more productive stuff I can be doing, but I understand. I, yeah, I listen you, to it. You next. talk about just more productive stuff. There's always the next hour and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year. Let's not act like doing something in the moment is going to take so much away from your life. Now get on out of here. I'm the love doctor. Let's go to Kevin in Mississippi. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Kevin. How are you? Hey, Stephen A. What's going on, man? Long time. This is the first time call. I really enjoyed the show. All right. Uh, get rid of that noise in your background. Talk to me so my listeners can hear you. What's your problem? Yes, sir. I want to talk, propose to my girlfriend on Valentine's tomorrow. You want to propose to your girlfriend on Valentine's yes. tomorrow. Okay. So what's the problem? That sounds like a beautiful thing. Well, I'm, I'm trying to see, like, um... We're going like we got a uh we're going to the moon, we're going out to eat. I'm trying to I want to know that would be the best time to go to it. like it's no, it's a movie. You you want to know? You hold on, hold on. You want to know when would be the best time to propose at the movies or someplace else? Yes, that night. Like, like, oh my lord! Oh my lord! Okay, okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here for you. How old are you, man? How old okay, are you? Okay, look. Uh, I just turned thirty five, Lord. Doctor. You just you just turned thirty five, and you're asking me whether or not the movies is an appropriate place to propose. It is not an appropriate place to propose. Here's the deal, Kevin. You don't want any distractions. You don't want some 100-foot screen as as a distraction or a movie as a distraction. You want her undivided attention. And you certainly want her to be, you want to be able to look into her eyes, right? And for her to look into yours, right, Kevin? Yeah. Right, well, how's right, that going to work out if you're in the darkness of a movie theater? No, that I'm doesn't about, work. We're going, we're, going, we're going out to eat and we're going to a show later on, too. I'm trying to see, like, what, what would be the best here's, place to do it at? Here's the deal. Before you take her out, okay, you let her get dressed. You let her look all pretty. And in a comfortable place, whether it's in her crib, your crib, or if y'all live together, let her turn around, surprisingly so, not even knowing what's coming. And you're on one knee with a ring in your hand, looking into her eyes and letting her know, no matter how beautiful my world is, it's nothing without you. I want you to spend the rest of your life with me. Will you do me the honor of being my wife? You don't wait until you go out and have a good time. You do it before you go out because chances are she's going to say yes to you. And when she says yes, that's just going to elevate the evening even more. Suddenly dinner's going to be better. The movie's going to be better. She's going to wrap her arms around you just a little bit tighter, feeling a little bit more comfortable, if not a lot more comfortable. And the smile is going to last significantly longer than it normally will. And you didn't just have a Valentine's Day moment. You truly, truly had a Valentine's Day. And by the way, while you're doing that, you got to also make sure you order some flowers for 1-800-Flowers. Get in, pick it up. I already got them on the way, Lord. That's doctor. right. You got them on the way. You understand? Sure. So you're going to be that, that way. You're going to make sure your whole day is special. Now get on out of here. I'm the love doctor. <laughs> 888 That's 888-SAY-ESPN. That was the love doctor. Courtesy of Martin Lawrence. Show Martin comedy show that was on for years it's not my idea it was his it's beautiful more to Stephen a smith show in a minute richard jennings former running back for the new york giants giving out flowers in times square we're about to find that out we're about to find out why we'll talk to him about that too that and so much more in a minute and listening live to Stephen a on espn radio guess what you're in the middle of the Stephen a smith show podcast damn it i mean it excuse me what's your name ow it's a bunch of women in Times Square that might be saying that in just a little while, about 24 hours from now, because they're going to see this dude, good-looking dude, looks like a football player, is a football player, formerly of the New York Giants, that's going to be in Times Square tomorrow, handing out roses. 
on Valentine's Day, courtesy of 1-800-Flowers. 1-800-Flowers. I'm talking about former running back for the New York Giants, one and only Mr. Rashad Jennings is on the line with us right now. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? What's up, Steven? How I you mean, doing, man? I'm what, good. Man, what are you doing, man? You, you, you making life hard for the fellas, man. I mean, you in Times Square giving out roses to women. I mean, what is this about? Explain yourself, Rashad. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm making it easy. I'm giving an example. So, hey, because just follow lead. But, no, I, I'm – um. I mean, you know, I got a chance to take off my helmet and, and and do other things. Dancing with the Stars was one of them, and I got to and show my in, in, infatible, um, like romantic side. So, mm. being that I am a hopeful romantic, I'm doing. I get a chance to on on the day that is a public affection of love. I get to be a symbol and make Women's Day. So, uh, making people feel special, no matter their ethnicity, background, culture. Um, I wanted to partner up with 1-800-ROSE, I mean, excuse me, 1-800-FLOWERS, simply for the fact that 1-800-FLOWERS has the exact same mission as a company as I do as a person, and that's putting smiles on people's faces. So that's what I'm I must confess, sir. I mean, listen, I was raised by five women. I would know the question that women out there would want to know. So I'm going to ask it to you, Rashad Jennings. I mean, you're a good looking dude. You're, you're one season 24 dancing with the stars. You look good. You're an athlete. You can dance and what have you. Clearly you can dance. Why do you, when you talk about public displays of affection, you are single. Are you not, sir? Man, you should be an agent the way you hype me up, but no, nah, I am, I am, I am. Well, why are you single? Why, why, why are you, why are you single since you, you know what to do and, and how to put a smile on a woman's face? One, one, a woman would ask, well, why is Rashad Jennings single, sir? Your answer to that would be what? So this is a new chapter of my life as I officially hung up my cleats. And so in this chapter of my life, I do intend on finding who Mrs. Jennings is. Is that right? So in other words, you put that on on pause and delayed it in favor of your professional work, uh, your professional aspirations. Is that correct, sir? Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So for me, to dedicate, now I get to dedicate more time and energy to other things outside the game. And because it didn't happen during the game, I, I say, you know what, I'm going to wait until I officially hang up the cleats and I'll open myself up for that. Okay, now when you say opening yourself up, for, are you putting a timetable on it? You're 32 years of age. Some people would sit up there and say, I got all the time in the world. Others might feel rushed. Where's your mindset, sir? So time, timeline, you know, I, I don't feel like you can rush. Um, I don't I don't feel like you can rush love. I don't feel like you can, uh, you know, uh, make that happen overnight. So I'm not putting a timeline on it. Um, but what I, I look at it like this, everybody I encounter with, I, I say that you're going to have fun. Um, you're going to have an experience and you have, and you're going to be better off having met me than not. Wow. And my heart's on lock. I can't help if you have the master key. Um, but I feel like honestly, anybody you encounter with, they should be better off having met you in life than not. And that's my biggest key. Anytime I, I encounter with so- a, with a female. So to be clear, Rashad Jennings, are you in Times Square tomorrow dishing out roses for 1-800-Flowers? Or are you out there looking for love in Times Square? Which is it? <laughs> I will be dishing out flowers on behalf of 1-800-Flowers. You can go to 1-800-Flowers.com, and you can call 1-800-Flowers and also use the promo code Rashad, R-A-S-H-A-D. You use Rashad as a promo code. You get 15% off of any flower that you buy. So make sure you use that promo code. But I will be dishing out flowers to as many people as I possibly can, meeting John's fans, dancing with the Stars fans, and hopefully collect fans on the way. But like I said, if, if I, I, can't, I can't force love to happen, and I can't necessarily – Stop it if it does. Rashad, I need your help with something, man, because I don't know if you know this. I, I hope you got a couple of minutes left because I, I got a little love doctor segment that leads into Valentine's Day where a brother's giving them, giving some folks some advice. And I got somebody on the line that appears to need my help. I think you could help her, Rashad. Are you down with it? You down to help me? Hey, I'm all for it. Let's do it. All right. This is Bob in Pennsylvania. He's about to tell us what his plight is. Bob in Pennsylvania, take it away. You're on the line, not just with the love doctor, but you're on the line with Rashad Jennings. Uh, Stephen A., Rashad Jennings. Thanks. I need some help, guys. We listening. Go ahead. All right. So I've been with my girl for about two years now. She's finishing up her grad school. We just bought a house together. 
Um, I had the idea to go away for the weekend, do like a wine country type thing. And she said, we don't really have the money for that. Just buy me a pair of running shoes. I said, all right, works out. You just buy me like a new Notre Dame hoodie. I'll buy you a pair of shoes and that'll be it. And she said, all right, I'll send you the shoes I want. I said, well, let's just put it on our own cards and just do it, like buy our own stuff. She goes, all right, perfect. Okay. The next day, the next day I buy this nice Notre Dame jersey. And I said, hey, I ordered my hoodie, and I told her, I said, hey, I just got my stuff. Listen, listen, Bob, Bob, I need to interrupt you a little bit, and I need you to get to your point quicker because it sounds like your signal is fading. What's the issue? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, So I tell her that I bought, like, my gift from her for me, and she says, I actually think I want to go somewhere instead. What do I do last minute for Valentine's Day? I'm stuck. What, what do you do last minute? Because basically what you're saying is she spent her money, you spent your money. She got you the hoodie, you got her the running shoes, and that was it. She gave you the impression that that would be all that's required. Now, right on the eve of Valentine's Day, she's telling you that she'd like to go away after all. Is that the correct description? Yes, and she works on Wednesday, which is Valentine's Day, obviously. So I was, she's adopted from China. I was thinking maybe... China, the, the Chinese New Year's. Uh, okay. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Rashad Jennings, what do you make of that? Well, it sounds like y'all had a plan of sharing, 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 buying each other stuff on each other's own car, which I, I, I personally on Valentine, you know what? Valentine, giving a gift is, is, is something special. So I, I'm, a, I'm a man of surprises. I don't ever think a woman should know what I'm about to get her, but that's my advice. But also, since now she has another idea, um, it sounds like she she wants to be surprised. So my 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 advice is to make her day special with a surprise. Maybe if you can't, maybe you don't have the time to go on vacation or take a trip or book a flight or whatever it is. You can take her somewhere very special that does not have to be the typical place. Now you know what you know what I would like to add to that, Rashad. What do you think about this? I think this 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 notion of her getting something and you getting something and both of y'all knowing. I agree with you about the surprise, but more importantly, it seemed like he, meaning Bob, was hell bent on equal distribution. There's no equality on Valentine's Day. That's her day. And so to me, it's incumbent upon him to make her feel special. Even if she were not surprised, it should be something along the lines where he is clearly stepping out to highlight her value to him as opposed to both of them being on equal footing on Valentine's Day. I don't think she wants that, and I think that's really the statement that Bob needs to make. This is your day. This ain't about me. This is the day that I show you how much I love and value you as a part of my life. What do you say to that, Rashawn? Uh, amen to that. Every woman wants to be put on a pedestal. Every woman wants to be recognized for how beautiful she is. And women, men may lead a relationship, but a woman always guides it, and she's the emotion. So you should feed into her emotions on this special day. There you go. Bob, did you get that? Yeah, so do you guys, like I said, she was adopted from China. You think Chinese uh, New Year's it parade in Philadelphia would Answer, work? Let, no, no. Answer the question. Do you happen? Do you absolutely positively know what will put a smile on her face? Yes. Do that. Bam. All right. Do Bam. that. And you am I right, Rochelle? Than we. Yeah, absolutely. You know her better than we do. That's so right. If you know how to make her happy, we're going to encourage you to do just that. Now, Bob, get on out of here. I'm the love doctor. <laughs> Rashad Jennings, man, I appreciate you, man. Thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Anytime, man. Take it easy. Enjoy Times Square tomorrow. I'm quite sure the ladies listening to the show will definitely enjoy you in Times Square. Looking forward to it, my man. You take care of yourself. All right. Be blessed. All right. One and only Rashad Jennings, formerly the New York Giants, right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Thanks again to Rashad Jennings, formerly of the New York Giants, for coming on the show. He's going to be in Times Square live tomorrow, handing out roses to the lovely ladies on behalf of 1-800-Flowers, 1-800-Flowers.com. Let's go back to the phones. Let's go to um, Jay in Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, hi, Stephen A. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, buddy. I got I got two quick questions about LeBron. 
Do you think the Cavaliers with their new team will get out of the East? Yep. Or you think they'll make it over the Celtics? Yep. And now, do you think do you think that LeBron will stay in Cleveland next year? I don't know. Only LeBron knows okay, that. Thank I'm you not so about much, to guess. Bro. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let's go to Sean in Inglewood real quick. You're live, Stephen A. Go ahead. Oh, all, right. all right. I'm I'm really tired of people uh, uh, going at LeBron just in general. It seems like every five years of his career, he's going through a different uh, type of uh, scrutiny on his performance. His first when he came in there, he was uh, going straight up and uh, talking about it, will he uh, develop in the league? He proved that. He got to the playoffs his uh, third or fourth year in the league. After that, he proved that, and then he finally became an NBA champion. Now they're talking about that people can't really play with him like that. It, it, I mean, it, LeBron's a straight winner, twenty four seven. So I really no, not twenty four seven. You don't lose five championships and be a straight winner twenty four seven. Okay, you got me on that one. But what more scrutiny does, does he? Why, why does he keep? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Why- can, I, can I ask you a question? Does any yeah. player you know ever? Deserve to play without any scrutiny, any player. Any player. Uh, LeBron does. LeBron no. does because Michael Jordan did it. Nobody did. There's no play in NBA history that didn't have scrutiny. That's the whole point. You proved my point. That's why we need. To, I need to get Cottonell Tissue as a as a as a, as, a, as a sponsor. That's exactly why. Because no player, no player, has played without scrutiny. So why should he? Michael Jordan is six for six with six NBA Finals MVPs, and he went through scrutiny. So why can't somebody who's lost five Finals in eight tries get some scrutiny? Because the guy been Michael Jordan also went to college. LeBron been out there. Oh, doing the so like so LeBron. So, so 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 let me get this straight. So because LeBron didn't go to college, he came straight out of high school. That means he deserves to play his entire career with no scrutiny. LeBron been a grown man. He's been doing his own thing, single mother, household, everything. Goodbye. He ha- he- Goodbye. Bye. You ain't getting away with that with me. I don't bring up the negative about people's personal life like that, but a damn sure ain't going to sit up there and let you gloss over criticism with with the positives. What the hell does him being a good father and a good husband have to do with me saying, excuse me, on the basketball court, you could have been a better leader this year. What does that have to do with it? What? That's nothing to do with it. That's the damn problem. That's the problem right there, Sean. You got to be kidding me. We're talking about LeBron James being a three-time champion, going to the finals eight times. But guess what? You might have to massage the egos of some sidekicks around you because you need them to help you win. And you're telling me because he came straight out of high school to the pros and that he's a good father and he's a good husband. He doesn't deserve any critique about his game. You got to be one of the most ignorant people I've heard calling to a sports talk radio show. It's just stupid. This is that kind of stuff right there that just reeks of ignorance. What if he were a bad husband? What if he were a bad father? Should we be on the radio talking about that? I don't. I don't think so. It's none of our business. So why is it all of a sudden it be lumped into the bowl of positivity when we're critiquing his basketball game? Why don't you just turn in your damn basketball card and not even watch anymore? Since fatherhood and parenthood, you search basketball skills about basketball. Just ignorant. Goodbye. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.